Hi, my name is Jim Sinesco. I'm the Vice President with AFC International. This is a real quick snippet, a little bit of fact of in in interest information for you, um, and it has to deal with cross sensitivities, specifically in this case, cross sensitivities of a carbon monoxide detector. Carbon monoxide detectors are all around us. We have them at fire services, industrial sites, all different places. But did you know that electrochemical sensors, sensors that are used to detect carbon monoxide in almost every type of gas detector out there, um, have cross sensitivities. Now some sensors, different gas sensors, are real good and don't have any or very few, and some sensors have quite a few. In the case of a carbon monoxide sensor, um, it's very, very few if that instrument is using what they call a specific filter. Some manufacturers of gas detectors have an internal specific filter, in other words, a, a filter that's inside, physically inside the sensor, that will actually um, attract and stop or filter out organic vapors and gases. Okay, so what that does is there's organics or other interferent gases in the area, that little filter inside or outside, an external filter, which is a filter that goes over the top of the sensor, but not inside, but those filters will absorb the uh, interferent gas and only allow carbon monoxide through. So it's really important that we check every so often to make sure that our carbon monoxide sensor in this case is only reading carbon monoxide because if we're trying to detect it in a background of organics and our specific filters or our organic traps or filters are used up or are not working, those will give you a false positive. A real good classic um, um, uh, interferent for carbon monoxide sensors are organic gases and vapors, gasoline vapors, any kind of solvent, anything organic. If that specific filter is used up, it need, uh, you're going to get plus indications and that's going to be a real problem for you trying to monitor carbon monoxide. The filters are good and, and as long as we make sure that those specific filters are working well, you should be a good in good shape. However, there is one big important gas you need to know of that cannot be filtered and it's in being used more and more in industry and we have to be cognizant of it because you can't filter it and that would be hydrogen. Hydrogen is produced in a lot of places but namely in the charging of marine batteries and heavy duty industrial forklift truck batteries. It's also presence, presence in electrolysis but the recharging of lead acid batteries and the arcing and all that produces hydrogen. So when we go to a warehouse, we go to an industrial plant, um, or we go to a marina or a warehouse where there are these industrial forklift batteries being charged, it's virtually impossible, especially if it's a small contained area, like most charging bays are, and if it, it's contained and there's not a lot of ventilation, that carbon monoxide detector, either in your single gas meter or in your multi gas meter, will give you a huge, huge indication of carbon monoxide when in fact it's only hydrogen and you're getting a false positive. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that. This happens to be a Ray Systems uh, Toxy Ray 3 for carbon monoxide. And again, MSA, Industrial Scientific, Drag, they all have this phenomena. This all happens to all of them. So I'm just using the, the Toxy 3 because I had it. But uh, what I'm going to do is I got the CO meter and right now and I'm clean fresh air environment we're reading zero. Zero part per million. Let me make sure. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and attach a calibration adapter and I am going to now turn on Carbon monoxide, this is 50 part per million carbon monoxide. So what I'm going to show you is the response to the target gas, carbon monoxide. And I'm going to go ahead and, and open up the gas valve. And you'll see that this uh, instrument, very fast responding instrument, um, is going to go ahead and detect. And I'll come up close for you. And it's at 34, 35. It's only been about 10, 12 seconds. We're in alarm, as we should be. That's pretty normal. I'm going to let it run for just about 30 to 40 seconds. And you can see we're at 40 part per million. We're just coming up above 40 here, hopefully. 
Okay, this instrument probably could have been calibrated a little bit, but you get the idea here. We got a pretty good response. We're in alarm, and now um, we're in alarm, and we're at 40. I'm going to go ahead and pull the gas off of that. So that, that gives you a response to normal carbon monoxide. Okay. Now at 50 part per million CO, that is the OSHA permissible exposure limit. So that's pretty good. We're reading, you know, a pretty good reading on the instrument fairly quickly. Again, this one could have been calibrated. It probably should be calibrated. Maybe we'll do that in the next segment. But um, we got readings for CO because it was CO. So that's good. Next, I'm going to go ahead and swap out the carbon monoxide with hydrogen. And this is 800 part per million hydrogen. Now, one would say, well, 800 part per million, that's, that's a lot. That's a high concentration. And I would tell you, probably not. Actually, when you're doing rechargeable batteries, charging of them, uh, marine batteries in these places that have hydrogen, hydrogen in early annealing furnaces, they also have it. You can get a concentration between 400, 500, 1,000. Steel mills also use quite a bit of hydrogen in the process to make steel. So it's not really unheard of. So I'm going to go ahead and swap out the regulator and put it on our hydrogen. I'm going to go ahead and attach the calibration adapter to the instrument like we did with the carbon monoxide. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the gas. I'm going to come in close so you can all see it. And boom, we're in alarm already. We're past 50. We're past the alarm set of 35. We're at 70 right now. And we're climbing. And we've only been on for about 15 to, to 18 seconds here. 90, 91, 97 now. So as you can see here, we're having a false positive, right? Because it's not carbon monoxide, it's hydrogen. But what you're seeing here is a classic case of cross interference. And in this case, hydrogen is so small, we can't filter it. The charcoal trap that we use, the emulsive traps that are typically on an inside or an external filter just can't filter out hydrogen. Hydrogen goes right through it. So I'm reading 108 part per million being produced by 800 part per million um, hydrogen. So is this a problem? Well, yes, it would be because if I'm trying to, I'm a safety engineer or an industrial hygienist and I want to put these monitors on employees to see if we have too much carbon monoxide but yet my hydrogen uh, system is, is uh, producing false positives we're gonna have a lot of people not working and it happens a lot um, the reason I'm even doing this video is because it happens way too many times I get the phone call all the time hey we're getting these readings I don't know what's going on your meters aren't working and I'll say well wait a minute are you are anywhere near those charging bays or what are you doing oh we're using a hydrogen annealing furnace wow okay so it brings up a real problem um, is there any type of a device that we can actually take this out of the equation that's interfering in the case of hydrogen really not so that way um, when you do encounter this situation at least you'll know you'll get an idea and understand that maybe uh, that's what's going on. Um, so if you have any questions on this or you need more information, uh, just give us a call at 800-952-3293. Again, my name is Jim Sinesco. I'm the vice president here. Give me a, a call. Drop me a line. Get my email. I'll be more than happy to talk to you more about this. Um, there are other sources of hydrogen out there. We'll get into that to another time. But if you have any questions, we'll be more than happy to help you. So again, Jim Sinesco for AFC. Thank you for watching.